Hey everyone. Uh, firstly, just want to say thank you for uh, listening to this episode or watching this on YouTube. If you are watching this on YouTube, uh, welcome to my face. The other thing I wanted to mention too is just a quick disclaimer of the audio in this episode. I think DJ's microphone might have been un unplugged a little bit or, or something. There's some clicking from his end. Um, other than that, though, his audio sounds fine. There's just some popping. Uh, so I know some people will want to mention that. But also, we ended up recording at different... Uh, uh, hertz <laughs> like we were just we were just recording at a different speed from each other essentially so i had to do some deep editing uh when putting this episode together so if there's any sort of overlay in our uh talking over each other or something or some something sounds cut off or something like that it's just because i had to go in and individually pretty much splice every single thing that we said uh, together so that it sounds like a normal conversation so it, it might end up sounding really good it might sound like we're more natural like in the same room with each other so i don't know just kind of wanted to put that disclaimer out there other than that though that's pretty much it thank you so much again for checking out this episode of the podcast uh be sure to share it and all that but i'll talk about that at the end of the podcast so enjoy this episode Welcome everybody to the Overleveled Podcast. Oh yeah, yeah got to gotta, gotta get that in there. Yeah, um, you did good, man. Thank you. Uh, I'm DJ, and with me today is the lovely, amazing, beautiful boy Gavin. Say hi, oh, Gavin. Hey, what's up, man? I like much, this, man. You know, a whole lot of stress off of me for the podcast. I like this <laughs> new way of doing it. Yeah, <laughs> just for a little bit. Yeah, just, <laughs> just for today, at least. Right. Um, um, so, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. You go. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, so I mean, I, I, I kind of had my thing that I was gonna do, but fuck it, man. If you, no, I was, <laughs> if you, no, feel I was like gonna, you, I was you gonna got the reins for this you. one. So, uh, uh okay. yeah. It, this welcome to Overlevel Podcast. We are a gaming news, uh, just talking shit about JRPGs in the best way possible because we all love JRPGs. And oh, yeah. uh, what are we gonna talk about today, Gavin? What's, what's going on? Well, we got a couple of things going on. Um, I know last time that we did an episode, I said, hey, next time that we record, it'll probably be our review of Chrono Trigger. But we like lied. the day after we recorded our last episode, they had the whole like Dragon Quest <laughs> uh, anniversary, the 35th anniversary. Yeah. And uh, we got just other stuff going on. Uh, so I just thought, you know what? We have enough kind of news and just like new shit that we can sort of discuss so mm -hmm. the chrono trigger episode even if it's not the next episode we do oh uh, me coming. and dj are both still playing through yeah we're playing through chrono trigger right now so yeah. uh we'll have a we'll have a full one of that pretty soon but oh, for yeah. right now uh you know we still want to be consistent with the videos and or the the podcast mm -hmm. so uh right now oh and i guess also if you can tell at least from the last couple of videos, I got a brand new microphone. So, hell yeah. yeah. I was going to say hell yeah sooner, but I was drinking uh, cherry Coca-Cola, not sponsored. Oh, wow. But hell yeah. <laughs> I thought we had some like serious Discord lag for a second. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, I got a new microphone. Uh, I had my 22nd birthday recently, and I was telling DJ that my father-in-law got me a... Uh, hundred dollar Amazon card, and I was like, "Fuck it, yeah, I'm getting myself a new mic. I got Hell myself yeah. an audio interface, and I got myself mm. some new like some JBL speakers because I'm gonna do some uh, music producing pretty soon." <sighs> oh, did you get that? That's new been another thing. Computer finally. Sorry, what were you saying? I was gonna say, did you get finally get oh, that new yeah, computer? Dude. Hell yeah! Yeah, yeah, and um, Brandon's letting me borrow his MIDI keyboard. Oh, nice. So I have like FL Studio, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just gonna be. I'm just going to be learning how to use all that all stuff right. just because I've I, I feel like one of the things that I um I feel like we mentioned this in the in our music mm. episode but I feel like I um have been like 
slacking on what I've been wanting to do like my whole life. <laughs> right. Uh, I initially had a desire to go to college so that I could write music like for movies and video games mm-hmm. and like a lot of instrumental stuff. Um, and my taste in music has just like grown a lot since. And I've, mm-hmm. I've just been so preoccupied with so many other things that I haven't really, um, you know, tried stepping my foot into that like pool, you know? Mm-hmm. So I have all of this new music gear and, um, you know, the new audio interface is nice, so now I can finally start, you know, plugging in my my many, many instruments and just start playing away. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, Speaking yeah. of, like, learning stuff, actually, I recently was teaching myself, because, uh, I mean, you've heard of, not sponsored, by the way, you've heard of Skillshare, right? Like, all those YouTube videos being like, this video is sponsored Dude. by Skillshare. Yes, yes. I've, so, I, I'm with you on this. I, I feel like I know where you're going, and I, I yeah. am also there with you. <laughs> so, yeah, I was watching just one person's video, and they said this, vid- this video was sponsored by Skillshare. I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll actually give Skillshare a shot. So I got a one-month subscription, and I've been using it actually to teach myself how to use uh, After Effects because I um, have never used nice. After Effects before, and I feel like learning it will definitely uh, improve my skills as an editor, and I can like do a lot more crazy shit. So I recently just finished the program, like the the tutorial for that. And so now I know the basics of After Effects, which is pretty tight. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So I'm going to start using that more. Nice, man. Yeah, I actually just got, because I just got this new PC and everything. So Mm -hmm. on here, I now have After Effects, um, uh, Adobe Audition, Premiere Pro, and Photoshop Mm -hmm. all on here. So um, Fuck yeah. Yeah, After Effects is another one of those things where I just, I've just felt so like at home with Mm -hmm. Premiere Pro. Mm -hmm. Um, I just like, I don't know, like I feel like most of the things that I've wanted to do, I've been able to do in Premiere Mm -hmm. Pro. Um, But now I'm kind of also like, well, what else, what can I do in After Effects? Like what really is there in After Effects that maybe I would like to do that just Premiere Pro won't be able to? to do and i realized there's actually a lot of other stuff that i would like to do that i just haven't even realized that i want to do it yeah there's a a lot (laughs) absolutely man yeah no after effects definitely opens a lot of doors of just like how much more things you can do creatively as an editor so i'm excited to do some more crazy shit with that well cool so anyways that's kind of like where we're at jrpgs (laughs) yeah back to back to the you know the shit that we do the podcast for um Mm -hmm. Disgaea 6 demo is out. Have you played it? Hell yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I did not get it, but I'm excited for it. Oh, okay. I actually have been hearing, though, that some people are kind of, like, upset about where Disgaea 6 is going because I was looking at the subreddit for it, and a lot of people are actually upset about Disgaea 6 because they're actually taking out a lot of the staple things that you normally see from, from a Disgaea game, which is kind of unfortunate that, that I'm seeing it. Like, you know how, like, um, like, imagine if in Final Fantasy they just got rid of Chocobos. In like the main line. Oh Final shit! Games. It's, no it's that like it's that it's sort of something like, like that. poignant of a staple that they're mm-hmm. like removing. <laughs> yeah, like because in Disguise Six, you can like there's a character creation thing. Well, not really character creation. You can like uh, create classes to like add to your uh, your team. So like, and one of the staple classes are like healers and uh, these things called skulls, which is like Disguise version of mages and stuff. And they just got rid of those characters, like staples that have been in every single Disguise game. They just got rid of, and they also just got rid of for for Disguise Six, and they also just got rid of a lot of other things. Hmm. So because of that people are kind of upset that Disgaea 6 is going in this direction. And now that I've heard that, I'm kind of like, eh, but you know mm. what? I'll still give it a fair shot because I love Disgaea. But yeah. Wow. Well, dang, man. Um, well, I mean, do you... I mean, I, I'm assuming you're still going to give it a shot whenever oh, it's 100%. fully out. <laughs> yeah. 100%. So, so I am looking need to check at out the demo. Of, I haven't checked it out. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at the details of the demo right now, and it's saying, like, if you... Um, Oh, I kind of read this a little wrong. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's currently uh, a a deal right now on the Nintendo Switch. You'll receive a 10% discount for uh, pre-ordering the game for mm. Disgaea 1, Disgaea 4, Disgaea 5, uh, Labyrinth of Refrain, uh, Langreiser 1 and 2, The Alliance Alive HD, uh, Caligula Effect uh, Trails of Cold Steel mm-hmm. three and Trails of Cold Steel four, so just you know, like a, just a big like NIS sale. Right. Were um, you about to say that uh, 
Were you about to say that, like, if you play the game, you could, like, use your save file for when you actually buy the game? Oh, well, I don't know if that's true. That's actually, I, I thought about that earlier because I'm just kind of reading the details here, but it doesn't say anything about that. What okay. I, how I initially read it was that you'll, if you play the demo, you'll have a 10% discount off the full game on the eShop, which, uh, okay, that, that would be really cool, cool but... Uh, I don't even know yeah. where the fuck I pulled that out from because that's not on here at all. So. <laughs> right. um, well, I was, I was going to say, because like, if, if you were going to say that, I was just going to mention how like that's pretty cool when some games do do that. When like when you play the demo, you can just like play the rest of the game from where you left off like on the actual full I'm game. I'm pretty sure buy. Dragon Quest Eleven does uh, that. Yeah, I love it when games do that. That's pretty cool. I, yeah. Yeah, Dragon Quest the Dragon Quest 11 demo is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like it lets you play through like a huge fucking portion of the game. Um and whenever you're done, even if you beat the, like if you beat the demo, um at least this is how it is on Steam. I'm sure if you just have the save files from the demo on PS4 or whatever, um it does the same thing, but if you complete the demo, um you get like special in-game items from for whenever you purchase the full game so it's kind of like it's kind of like um it really does feel like a free trial of the game that you get because as soon as you finish the demo not only do you just get to pick up exactly where you left off but you know you get you get in-game item stuff and i'm pretty sure octopath traveler did that same thing okay i think so like if you started with one of the characters whenever you get the full game you pick off, you like you pick up right where you left off in the game. Right. And speaking of Octopath Traveler, there's some cool shit going on with something related to that. Oh yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Um. Next up, have you like, have you looked into Scarlet Nexus? No, but I've heard of it. Okay, so Scarlet Nexus. This is interesting because I just, I just watched a uh, like a full like nine minute long. Uh, like story explanation mm. it's kind of weird it was uh, it was uploaded by um bandai namco okay and it's it's interesting because they uploaded this nine minute video <laughs> that goes and explains a pretty much the in, the entire like story summary and just like kind of what you're doing in this world and it felt weird to me because i was like i don't know i don't like this game looks really interesting i don't know if i want to watch this video because it looks like they're just telling me the whole fucking story of the game um and it it it's like while i was watching it it really felt like i was listening to a review of the story with (laughs) no opinions okay you know Right, yeah, yeah. Like, it just felt like, he, here's what the story is, and just, like, like in a review form, mm-hmm. um, like, a profe- like a professional review of the story of the game, but no fucking opinions whatsoever. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, Interesting. anyways, uh, the world seems really cool. It kind of looks like it has um, gameplay akin to, like, Nier, mm-hmm. like the Nier games. Yeah. Um, and graphically, it looks fucking crazy. Uh, this is a game that's going to come out for PS4 and PS5 and the all of the Xbox consoles. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It seems pretty tight. Like the character models, they all look very cartoon anime stylized, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But the whole other world around them looks like very realistic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like, did you ever play Code Vein? No, but or... I actually bought it not too long ago. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Yeah, it's been on sale everywhere that I've seen, so I've been really considering buying it. Mm-hmm. Um But yeah, so it kind of it gives me a lot of code code vein vibes. Mm-hmm. Um which I actually like I have not played it yet, but there apparently and maybe you can consider this a spoiler, so if you don't want any if you want like zero spoilers of code vein and and you you want to play it one day maybe maybe cover your ears for this one but it'll only take a few seconds but i i hear that it's technically um connected to the god eater games oh interesting okay like yeah and i've i haven't really played any of those but apparently it's like kind of hinted towards the end of that game that it's connected Mm -hmm. to god eater which is kind of cool because now i'm like well shit 
now that it's now that I know it's kind of like interconnected between these other games, now I feel like I want to go play fucking God Eater. So yeah, I mean I've played a little bit of God Eater back when it first came out on the PSP, but I've never beat it. And uh, but I yeah. do kind of want to go back and like replay those games because they they were pretty fun. The little bit that I played, they're Especially, all like, they're all re released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I have. Yeah. I so, own God Eater two for the PS4. I have oh, for one. PS4. Yeah, yeah. I think God Eater is was re released as Rage Burst. Mm-hmm. God Eater Rage Burst. Yeah. So yeah, that one's typically kind of cheap. So I might pick that one up pretty pretty soon as well. But yeah, so Scarlet Nexus. That's that's another one. I think it's coming out pretty soon. Uh, but that's one that I think I I would like to keep an eye out on. Tight. Um. But okay, this is this is kind of stepping away from uh, role playing games or like Japanese role playing games, but. Since we did our last um, podcast, they showed a shit ton of gameplay for Horizon Forbidden West. Oh yes, yes. Have you yes, yes. have you watched <laughs> have you watched it or uh, seen any of that gameplay? Oh, not all of it, but I watched the initial trailer. Yeah, yeah, dude. So I think I think this is probably the best looking video game. Mm-hmm. Like as far as graphics go, one hundred percent. Like I think it it is probably the most graphically impressive video game I've ever looked at in my life. Yeah, this this is beautiful. <laughs> don't I don't want to spend too much time talking about it just because uh, I don't think I finished watching all of the gameplay. Mm-hmm. But from what I saw, man, I at least want to go back and replay Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> Or, yeah, no, same. When I saw that, I was like, dude. <laughs> yeah, or at least like check out the the DLC. Like I never, there's like some story DLC to Horizon Zero oh, Dawn yeah, that yeah, I just yeah. never got around to playing. Uh, right, but I hear it's awesome. Oh, it is awesome. So, yeah, Aloy's just such a fucking badass. Oh, darn! Um, and like I love that. Like, like I, we we finally just get like a solid female protagonist. Yes, it's, it's like great. no bullshit around yeah. here. She's just like no a cool like character. zero like tropes mm-hmm. of of like any sort of like toxic. I guess like uh, like views yeah. of women or anything like not sexualized in uh, yeah. any way. She's just a fucking cool yeah, character. She's awesome. So I'm excited for the sequel. I I definitely want to go back and replay the first one. I love all of that lore mm-hmm. that's in there. Definitely. So now to kind of talk about the news that we that we missed. Mm-hmm. Like seriously, I I mentioned this to DJ. Uh, this news literally. <laughs> all just started fucking happening like the day after we recorded yeah. our podcast episode. So I was like, awesome. Glad <laughs> <laughs> glad I fucking missed that opportunity, but Dragon Quest 35th hey. anniversary. It's an old boy. Um we got we got a good amount of stuff. Oh um, yeah. Dragon Quest is eating good tonight. Some yeah, some some cool stuff, uh, some not very cool, st- or just like some stuff that I'm just not at all interested in. Right. They came out with a trailer for a game called uh, Dragon Quest Kishi Kishi. Hmm. This is this looks like a. Um, I'm kind of watching the trailer as we're going over it. Mm-hmm. I feel like Dragon Quest is really good about making content, or just like putting out dragon quest games that are essentially just huge reference pools of oh, everything yeah. that dragon quest has been since it since it like originally released definitely yeah it's uh but not like a not like how final fantasy all the bravest was just this huge cash grab <sighs> right. for references and character yeah, sprites stupid. like yeah like i'm not quite sure what this game is is even supposed to be really there was there really wasn't any gameplay for it it was just like a cinematic trailer for what looked to be uh erasers mm. like I, I don't know it like you play you play as erasers <laughs> I guess, <yeah. laughs> and there's like drawings i don't i ser- i don't know what the fuck <laughs> this is but it is a it is a mobile game um so I don't know. I'm not like a huge mobile game guy. Same. Um like there's some that I enjoy. Um, but ultimately anytime I see something that looks cool and I see coming to mobile, I'm like, what the fuck? Like <laughs> why? <laughs> why? 
Just yeah. come to the fucking console. Put it on Nintendo Switch. That's right. the other thing, too. There's so many mobile games out there that I'm just like, just fucking put it on the Switch. Oh, 100%. Like, even if it's I like... Agree. But even I if, guess, you know, mobile games are just really popular in Japan. Yeah. It's just like, even if you want to sell the mobile game for like a dollar or two, even though it's like free on mm. mobile, like, there's just some of these games that I would just much rather... Like play on my TV, <laughs> you know, with stupid touch. Right. Oh yeah, I agree. Definitely. Or whatever. Okay, so right. they um, they announced some Dragon Quest Ten stuff. So Dragon Quest Ten is the one and only um, MMO for the Dragon right. Quest games, right? Yep. So they they came out this trailer for a new update, basically. I don't know if it's the last update, like how Endwalker is for 14, but they announced like a whole new expansion. Um, and then right at the end of announcing the new expansion, they said it's not releasing. There will not be a worldwide release. So oh, wow. currently, yeah, currently there's still no word on Dragon Quest X, the MMO coming, you know, to America or any other nation mm-hmm. outside of Japan. So that sucks. It's kind that of uh, the kind of the kind of blue balled us there, right? Um, yeah, because it, it's like this trailer was like sh- showcasing every single version of the game uh, up to the newest version, version six. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like they're just going through all of them, and it seemed like they were about, like they were building up to like every version of Dragon Quest X will be available all at once in a complete package coming to the U.S. and the U.K. and whatever, blah blah blah. But it really was just a trailer for version six, and they said, "Sorry, it's still <laughs> still Japan only." And it's like, "What the fuck, guys? Uh, just yes. just change yeah. the text, right? <laughs> just you do you not have any translators." <laughs> um. Anyways. Right after they announced Dragon Quest X, though, they also announced Dragon Quest X Offline, mm. um, and there still there was no indication for a, for a worldwide release. At least for Dragon Quest X version six, the MMO, they mm-hmm. had a note saying not releasing worldwide. Okay. But then they showed off Dragon Quest X Offline. And there was no indication whether or not it was staying in Japan or coming to the U.S. So this is, I, I guess, just kind of like a chibi version of the all of the story events of Dragon Quest mm. X. Interesting. I seriously have no idea, really, though. Right. Like, because Dragon Quest X is, it all, it all looks like a normal Dragon Quest game, but yeah. it's it's an MMO. Whereas Dragon mm-hmm. Quest Ten Offline, all of the characters are like small and chibi, um, yeah. and I don't know like anything about the story to Ten, so I can't say whether or not this is like a remake of some sort mm-hmm. or it's like a like a completely different version altogether, like a with a new story. But who knows? Yeah, who knows? Do you do you think that would be an MMO that you would get into if Dragon Quest Ten came to a, the U.S.? If it did, yeah, I definitely check it out. One hundred percent. Yeah, I know that ten is like if you if you have a Japanese Nintendo Switch account, um, mm-hmm. ten is available on the eShop for free, I believe. Oh, and neat. I th- and I think you can like play. Like I'm not sure if it's just a trial or if like mm-hmm. the game is just straight up free, <laughs> but um, you can you can play ten on your Nintendo Switch if you just have a Japanese account. Oh wow, nice. Uh, I haven't given it a try, but I'm not that desperate to be honest. Yeah, yeah, and I watched a video too. Uh, I want to give the guy credit um, because he he's been making videos for a little while, and he made one video recently that what that kind of like blew up his channel a little bit. But I think he only has like a little over 200 subscribers. Oh yeah, his YouTube channel's name is The Crawl. I'm actually ooh, he has 299 subscribers right Ayy. now. Boom, there you go, 300 subscribers, Ayy. 300. There you go, buddy. Anyways, so homeboy uploaded a video called "Is Final Fantasy 11 Still?" Uh, or sorry, that's not the name of it. It's called "So I Started Playing Final Fantasy 11 in 2021," and it's basically just a um. Is it 
is it worth checking out in 2021 kind of kind yeah. of video like this guy now he only has 300 subscribers but this <laughs> video has like 60,000 views and it's like his most viewed channel right um, i feel that he he's a game designer so like oh. he's been uploading um update stuff on a video game that he's making i believe an rpg maker mm-hmm. okay. so yeah all of his videos have anywhere between like um <laughs> 12 views and uh 60,000 <laughs> views <laughs> yeah he's he's Good got range. a few videos but the next video that he made is um it's called is dragon quest 10 worth playing if you don't speak japanese Hmm. and i think that's a very good question um like i feel like that's something that i would you know i i'd want the answer to that because um even though i haven't played a whole lot of dragon quest i i want to know if it's like if there's a way that I could play it but still yeah. enjoy it, like could I even make any progress? Yeah. If you have the PC version, there's like some mods. He kind of goes over this in the video, so you should if you're if you're listening to this and you are interested in Dragon Quest 10, check out this video. Um he mentions how in the PC version that there is a um a program that kind of does a an all right job at automatically translating a lot of the text on the screen. Mm. Um, not everything though, but right. you can at least open up your menus and know what the fuck you're doing, you know? Right. Anyways, uh, Dragon Quest 10. Um, I hope we get it eventually. That'd be cool. That be but I think I would have to at least play through all the other games before I hop on a fucking, an, a different MMO that's not Final Fantasy 14, you know? Yeah, 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 I agree. Okay. So this is the one that I was most fucking amped about. <laughs> And that is the final fit, or not? Just kidding. The <laughs> dragon, it's the Dragon Quest Three HD two D remake. Yeah, boy. Have you uh, have you started playing any of? Nope. Uh, just been focused on Chrono I guess Trigger. The the first trilogy. Nope. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> do Do you think this is a game that you would play before or after you play three? Um, like just like the original three. Well. Normally, I'd probably want to play the original and then play the remake, but I'm probably going to end up playing the remake first just because I'm focused on a bunch of other games. Uh So I'll probably do play the remake and then eventually go back and play the original and compare it that way. Okay, yeah. What about just like one and two? Do you plan on playing one and two and then wait for the HD remake to come out? Or maybe play it like Uh, three, one, two? I mean, I guess, did they say when this game is coming out? at all it's a great question because <laughs> for me it all depends on like yeah whenever i finish all the games i want to play yeah i feel you um because i do eventually want to play the dragon quest games it's just already have like a list of games that i want to play but ne- normally because i know you told me that like the the way you should pl- do it i think you said is one two three right yeah i mean i i would say just in general if you're gonna start playing uh the dragon quest games I feel like it's best experienced if you just play them in the way that they came out. Um, okay. Yeah. One, two, three, well, four, then five, I'll six, probably, seven, eight, you know, just... Yeah, yeah, Then I'll probably do that, is, like, whenever I eventually finish some of the games I want to play, I'll just play the original two, and then if by the time I finish two, the, the, the remake for three comes out, I'll probably just do the remake. But if it doesn't come out by the time that I beat those, then I'll just play the original first. Mm-hmm. So... There, there really is no. There's not even like a release window for the three remake. Okay, um, it's just that the work. But I'm on assuming. It, yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm assuming. Maybe it's wrong to assume this, but I imagine it's coming out this year. Really? Um, you think that? Just because it, it's the, it's the 35th anniversary, and you know we're halfway through the year right now. Right. And from what they showed of the game, it looks like they. I mean, I guess they just showed a lot of the beginning of the game, but mm-hmm. I, don't, I mean, from what they showed, though, it, I, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me if it came out this year. Maybe, but I also wouldn't be shocked if it came out in twenty twenty two. You know, yeah, it could be like either later um, this year or early twenty twenty two. It could be either one of those. Yeah, and and you, you had mentioned it with, um, you were talking about Octopath Traveler. Um, mm-hmm. That's the other big thing about Dragon Quest Three HD 2D is yeah. like that's that's the style. Thing. Yeah, like Square Enix did this whole thing a little while ago where they coined the 
the uh, the term HD 2D. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I guess now Square Enix is just going to be busting out um, content that's in this style of like Octopath Traveler. Uh, Fuck yeah! I remember a lot of people being like, "I hope that Final Fantasy VI is is in this style," and then they did this game first. Would that be tight if they do a remake of VI and it's in this this style? Like, that'd be fucking. Awesome. I have I have a theory about that because I I one hundred percent would be on board with an with an FF six in this style, but I think the next remake that they come out with mm. will be Final Fantasy V in this style because I I just feel like really you think yeah, five. Yeah, because I can't remember who said it, um, but whenever they were being interviewed about the Final Fantasy VII remake, they were talking about well, if you could if you could remake any other game um, or revisit any other game in the series and kind of do a, like a sequel or a or a spinoff or a remake of it, um, mm-hmm. he he responded probably Final Fantasy V. And now that, yeah, now that Square Enix has put out games like Octopath Traveler and um, Bravely Default 2, Mm -hmm. and now they're doing the Final Fantasy or uh, Dragon Quest 3 remake in here, I I feel like Square Enix has been very focused on like putting out just like fun games recently, you Mm -hmm. know? Not to yeah. say that Final Fantasy VI is not fun. I think it's a really fun game. But Final Fantasy V has just a very heavy emphasis on like gameplay and mm-hmm. um, all it's of more the many different story. ways that you can customize it. Yeah, yeah, very lighthearted story, very customizable gameplay. I feel like that would be one of the easiest things that they could do. Because, oh, yeah. of course, Final, Final Fantasy V has a very large fan base. I haven't played it yet, but I know a lot of people do love that game mm-hmm. and, and favor that game. Um, you know, I don't think nearly as many people as six yeah. or seven or nine or whatever. So, yeah. but, but I do think, uh, there's, there's not a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of wrong that they could do, you know, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm, like, definitely. like I feel like five would be like, okay. Like if they came out with a remake of five and, it had like a really great reception. I feel like so many people would be like, holy shit, they can actually do a full Final Fantasy video game in this <laughs> style. They need to just do one through six. Like they just got to get oh, all of them yeah. done in this style. And that's like, man, if they just did another huge fucking release of Final Fantasy games on, and did one through six all in this style, oh, like it dude. doesn't have to be, you know, seven remake quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just like let us like give us a modern version, and then just, mm-hmm. just make those edges look pretty, you know? Right. Oh, that would actually would be really <laughs> like, cool if they did that. Yeah, yeah. Let let me take it on the go or something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm fucking pumped for it. Um, <laughs> yeah. The only Dragon Quest games that I have played, um, are one, two, and three, and I I finished all of those on their N- Nintendo Switch ports. So I'm excited to see this. Um, you know, three three has some like a you know not like a groundbreaking story or like a must experience kind of story uh, like yeah, a lot of the right. Final Fantasy games or even right. other Dragon Quest games for that matter. But um, I I do I am wondering how they will like or or if they will update the story to be mm-hmm. more. I guess just inclusive into the, into like the lore of the Dragon Quest games. Like, will there be, will there be pieces of Dragon Quest Eleven that we should know before playing this remake because it's technically right. included in this universe? Or, you know, will they eventually, I don't know, do some do some remakes to one and two to make like this mm. HD two D trilogy of one, two, and three yeah. or something? Or maybe but, there'll uh, be something related to. A brand new Dragon Quest game. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> and uh, speaking of a brand new Dragon Quest game, they showed off the trees for 12. Hey! Yeah. So, yeah, the fucking teaser. That was like, oh, yeah. that was epic. <laughs> yeah, dude, this trailer was bad. At, like, if, if, if the game comes out and it's anywhere near, like, close to the tone of this trailer... 
Mm-hmm. I think we've got a fucking dope ass, like dark and gritty Definitely, Dragon Quest yeah. game. Um, yeah, so Dragon Quest Twelve: The Flames of Fate. Mm. That's a fucking cool name. Hell yeah, <laughs> it's got the FF. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Flames of Fate. Hmm. Hmm. Bravely Default did a. Uh, the flying fairy. Hmm. FF. Mm. It was supposed to be a dra- mm. like a like a Final Fantasy spinoff. Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. Dude, that just made me hmm. think. Actually, what if they made like a a fighting game spinoff where it's like Dragon Quest characters versus Final Fantasy characters? Oh, dude, you know that's going to happen in the future. Oh, you know? definitely. Like, there's nothing stopping them. They yeah. absolutely could do. I mean, I'm sure. Maybe, maybe there already is some sort of like crossover game that i i just don't know about <laughs> maybe but, i feel like there has to um, be right yeah i mean because these are they're all owned by the same company yeah they all have the rights to dragon quest and final fantasy i mean king fucking disney and final fantasy can fuck why can't dragon <laughs> yeah. quest and final fantasy fuck i know right they're in the same so, room like come on yeah but yeah those are uh that's kind of that's kind of been the the biggest kind of news stuff mm-hmm. from um yeah just since we last recorded, but yeah, I'm excited. Um, I, I still want to play through uh, all the other Dragon Quest games. Like I'm, I'm same. Yeah, I'm still like in the very beginning of four on my phone. So mm. yeah, want to get through it. Want to play them all. Hell yeah, yeah. I'll eventually get there. I guess since we since we've kind of jumped off the news train, that's pretty much all I had. Well, for actually, the news. real quick, yeah. Here I have I have actually one news thing that I just remembered now oh, that yeah. I'm looking at. Go for it. So this is just a supposed, uh, just a supposed theory. It's just some leaker has been saying this about the up and coming Dragon's Dogma Two. Uh, supposedly, uh, Dragon's Dogma Two uh, is going to run on the same engine as the Resident Evil games, which Ooh. that would be really fucking tight because these Resident Evil games that have been coming out have been. Very pretty, pretty as fuck. And if yes, the next absolutely. Dragon's Dama game has the same quality, that will be tight. <laughs> I, I would be oh, very excited. Oh fuck with yeah, that. man! Yeah, that'd be so That's cool. I wonder if they would eventually like just do a big remaster, um, like how they did with mm-hmm. Demon Souls, but just mm-hmm. like like re-release Dragon's Dogma, uh, but like in the RE engine. Right. I would hope so because like be the the re-release of Dragon's Dogma that they did initially was kind of like poor. Like they literally just upscaled the 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 textures a little bit and then resolution yeah and then just released the yeah. exact same game changed nothing about it which i i hate when games do that just like do a lazy remaster but take off 10 bucks it's like okay yeah <laughs> like like kingdom hearts i remember whenever kingdom hearts one came out i mean i feel like that's kind of what you should do you should kind of like examine whatever game you're trying to re-release and and say okay well what is what are some amazing things we could do with this mm-hmm. um or just like things that we could change about it um i mean firstly they just gave us the english version of the game that we never had in japan but then they also they updated so much of the controls like the controls were just so different so it was like playing a completely new different right. game and you know i mean but on paper, really, other than the controls, it was an upscale mm-hmm. uh, of as far as like textures go mm-hmm. and stuff. But you know, you got like theater modes, and like you have all these different like modes, yeah, and just like new things that are either updated or added. Uh, that I feel like you know, Dragon's Dogma is one of those games that I feel like definitely needs oh one hundred percent some updated shit one hundred percent yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm hoping that the ne- this next game will be a lot better. Yeah, and since you're even talking about Resident Evil, I actually last night beat the Resident Evil Three remake. Oh, tight! Um, How was that? I, yeah, I got that on. It was uh, it was good. Um, I'm so fucking glad that I waited for it to <laughs> no longer be full priced. That's you know? yeah, I because I, I heard yeah. I mean, I beat this game in five hours. Um, Right, yeah. And unlike Resident Evil 2, where you finish playing as one character and you can mm-hmm. play as the other character and mm-hmm. then you have all these game modes afterwards, there's not really anything after the story. Um, Yeesh. Like, I guess you could re you could replay it and get all the collectible stuff, mm-hmm. but all the collectible stuff is just like 
oh, play through the whole game again, but now you have a gun that has infinite ammo. Yeah, that, uh, that which is kind of <laughs> which is which is fun, but it's not really adding anything else to the game. Like, right? I mean, I guess I can just get through it faster. Mm. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Right? Or, or don't die as much, or or yeah, find little yeah. collectibles that give you uh, like pieces of artwork and right. um, like three D models that you can examine. It's just like nothing that i want <laughs> oh yeah definitely <laughs> you know? definitely so uh, um, at, sorry what were you saying no i was just gonna say uh i was just gonna say like that actually reminded me like there's one game uh that i remember that actually did a really good job of how you should do a remastered version of it and that was mm-hmm. uh that the dot hack gu series because they came out with yeah. a, a long time ago hack gu dot hack gu last recode and what's really cool about that is like the original gu games for the ps2 are now super rare they're really fucking expensive there's like three of them in the series and each one's like a hundred bucks minimum and then eventually you know they made a remake of all those games together in one disc for like 60 bucks so you can like these three really mm-hmm. rare games with uh, slightly better graphics and also improvements of um the uh, the gameplay and all that the stuff original. from the original like for just way cheaper and it just looks better yeah. and you get all three games and also even they even added a new game a fourth game to that to the series that expands on the story and stuff like that okay. okay so like it's really cool that like you're getting all these three games plus new content for like much cheaper and stuff like that like for me that's like a, a really solid example of like this is how you should do a remaster in my opinion yeah and i think also just with whenever we were talking about resident evil Mm-hmm. Like me, you, and Brandon played through Resident Evil 4 on mm-hmm. Videoverse. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I'm sure you remember, I was just not a fan of that game like, right. at all. Yeah, <laughs> like, I remember. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I just, like, I mean, it was, like, fine, I guess. But holy shit, man, every single time that I had the controller mm. in my hand, I just wanted to fucking throw <laughs> up. Or, like, because, like, Brandon, Brandon knows that game really well. Mm-hmm. So he was just, like turning around really fast so much and i just didn't even want to fucking look at the screen i was like this (laughs) sucks like and that's that's another game that i feel like it just got an hd port Uh (laughs) onto uh you know onto the i mean you could change the controls around Mm. which is helpful but it still just has the controls of a fucking early 2000s playstation game you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. or ps2 game so i am hopeful that whenever they remake four they just make it good <laughs> just because <laughs> i ah uh, those fucking controls man yeah no so, i feel you oh also another thing about our last episode we actually got copyright claimed by square enix <laughs> really on it was uh, like a visual claim on, on the youtube channel yeah um, mm. because I played the original like trailer for Final Fantasy Dimensions. Oh wow! Well. Um, because you know how I was saying like, oh yeah, I definitely want to play through Final Fantasy Dimensions mm-hmm. and maybe give like a review of it or something, just because mm-hmm. nobody really knows about this game like a whole lot, you know. So in the YouTube version, I just like. Just for some visual pizzazz, I was like, yeah. ah, here's here's just the trailer for the game, you know? Right. <laughs> and uh, it got claimed by uh, fucking Damn. Square because they're like, this is ours. And I'm like, yeah, but... <laughs> Yeah, but, no, I feel that. That actually happened. I just, I'm telling, yeah. I'm so, it actually happened with I, me and my, with yeah. uh, the Ramen Stand podcast. Uh, in the very first episode, I wanted to add like um, Oof. clips of the different animes that we talk about. And like in the first episode, I was talking about Hitman Reborn, and I showed some visuals of that, just showing like the opening trailer, stuff like that. And uh, it got blocked because I was showing footage of Hitman Reborn. So I had to like just be like, all right, I'm not going to show any footage. <laughs> but I think pictures, just showing pictures uh, should be fine. Yeah. That's what I'm going to try to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, big oof. Yeah, I mean, fucking... And that's the other thing, too, is, like, if you want to... If you want to, like, rebuttal it, mm-hmm. and you, um... Like, you lose. Oh, yeah. Like, you could just get the whole channel terminated. Yeah, and I'm nah. like, I don't know if I want to <laughs> fucking go against Square Enix <laughs> right now. Um, But yeah. <clears throat> so... I mean, it's okay. I mean, copyright claims aren't that big of a deal. Yeah, I, it's just like you can't make money off of this, and I'm like, well, I'm not fucking making money off of anything. So, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. But oh well. So, 
Last week, we asked a question of the week, and DJ、mm-hmm. decided to choose violence for that one. Yes, sir. So, do you want to? Do you want to go ahead and、Thank、re-ask you, what? Yeah. Do you Do you want to re-ask that question? Uh, I just like do you do you remember what it was? <laughs> oh wait,、uh, I put up Discord. All right, here we go. Okay,、uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's see. My question of the week was: What are some things you hate about JRPGs or RPGs as a whole? That was the question that I asked、yeah. last time. Yeah. So in our Discord, we we really just got one answer, but in our Discord,、uh, Twilight Artichoke、uh, went ahead and said, "I hate battles." That you're supposed to lose、mm. to further the story, because I hate losing battles in general.、Uh, just make a cutscene, in- or just create a cutscene instead. And I, dude, I cannot fucking tell you how many times I've just been like trying <laughs> my hardest to stay alive and use all of my fucking phoenix downs or <laughs> you know potions or you know, whatever healing material the game has,、mm-hmm. and、uh, it's just like, oh, you're just supposed to die. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'm like, well, fuck. Yeah, no, I, I mean, because I get it, because they want you to like actually feel that sense of just like, oh, I'm not good enough. But yeah, no, I, I hate it too. And actually, funny enough, there is one battle that you do encounter later in Chrono Trigger that's like that, to where like you fight this、yes. boss, you die, and then like, oh, you're in prison. It's like, ah,、oh, I thought it was a win. <laughs> yep. And then, um, and then even in some cases, if you just so happen to stay alive long enough to, um, I guess. Attack like, I guess give give out enough damage to、mm-hmm. the enemy, the same thing will、yeah. will sort of happen. Yeah, where it's like you you used enough, uh, like you stayed alive for long enough, and then you gave out enough damage, and then that enemy just uses some mega move and、mm-hmm. wipes out the rest of your your party. Right. Uh, one thing I can think of immediately is at the end of disc one. For I believe it's disc one,、uh, for Final Fantasy IX,、mm-hmm. you fight Beatrix, and that's exactly what happens. It's like no matter like what like you're either supposed to die or you stay alive for long enough to where she uses the special、mm-hmm. move, and then like your party is defeated, and then that's the end of disc one. Right. But yes, I completely relate to this thing <laughs> that you hate about JRPGs. Oh, definitely.、Yeah. Um. Do you have Do you have anything in particular for me?、Uh, I think the one thing that I'm starting to hate more in JRPGs is random encounters in general.、Mm. Like it, they're just starting to become super annoying to me. I don't know. Like I hate moving, and then like every two steps, you just encounter a battle and a, just a battle and battle and battle. Especially in later <laughs> games, when like some of the battles are just like as hard as a boss battle. Like just、mm-hmm. rant, just normal enemies become as difficult as like a boss fight. Those ones are、mm-hmm. annoying too. So those are, that's like the big one for me right now is I'm, I'm starting to hate random encounters in JRPGs. Yeah, yeah, A- and it's it's hard to it's hard to play those like older games that have random encounters.、Mm-hmm. It's it's hard to play them nowadays without like emulating them and and like speeding up the game. You know? Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Like I I I just cannot and will not play Final Fantasy One,、mm. for instance, without being able to like speed up everything. Yeah, same the same for me、um, with the first few and with Pokemon too. Like I can't play early Pokemon without speed speeding it up. It's just too slow. Yeah, and so I love how like Bravely Default Two came out, and there are random encounters in that game.、Mm. Um. But like in the first Bravely Default game and in the second one, you can th- there straight up is an option to just like like you just tap the trigger or something and it speeds everything up like times four. So you can just run around in circles,、oh, wow. and just grind by just speeding up all the battles and stuff like that,、um, which is really nice. But a game like Octopath Traveler, I've put in like forty fucking hours into that game,、hmm. and I'm maybe halfway done. Like I think we talked about that like. It, in our first couple of episodes,、mm. but I put in a shit ton of time into that game, and it's mostly just because of all these fucking random encounters.、Yeah. Uh, it's so annoying, and like how you were saying with Pokemon, the the only Pokemon games that I have played to like to the completion were Pokemon Fire Red, Pokemon Ruby, and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu,、mm. and I. 
I can't tell you how glad I was that Let's Go Pikachu actually had the fucking enemies on the screen and you oh, could yeah. run away from them if you wanted to, you know? Yeah. Um, like, that's just something... I, like, I appreciate those older games that have random encounters, mm-hmm. but nowadays... Let's just get it. Let's just not do them. Can we, guys? Can we just not do fucking random encounters right. anymore? Can we just agree that that's that that's not fun anymore? Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, that's the cool thing about because Sword and Shield they they do the same thing now. Like you can see the monsters on the the map, so the no random encounters with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the monsters. The monsters. Are you Japanese, bro? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, for me, random encounters. I think another thing that I'm also starting to like not like as much, but I'm still okay with it is um oh I literally just forgot it. Fuck, I just had it. Alright, never mind. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, well I, I have one. Um I hate whenever and this is a this is a particular thing that like I can I can bring this up with, with two games. It's Final Fantasy thirteen and Xenoblade Chronicles two. Um it's whenever just there's just so many fucking tutorials. Oh yeah, just yeah. throughout the throughout the game, mm-hmm. like Final Fantasy VII. In that game, the first thing you do is get into a fucking battle. Yeah, and there is there's no instructions. You you have your pointer on the screen. Uh, you have your little time gauge that fills up, and you have your list of commands that you can do. And the game just says, "Go, mm-hmm. do it. J- f- play the game now. Just do the game. <laughs> the game is happening now. Fucking play it." And that is that is so nice <laughs> that they have done mm-hmm. that. And so, and that's another thing that we can that we have talked about, I think, before. But Final Fantasy is just so good at just throwing you in go it grabs you and it pulls you in yeah. immediately and just says fucking do the thing so we uh na- now we're in a time where you will start playing the game and a huge sweeping cinematic will happen and mm. you're just so fucking excited to like fight the boss that it's like building up to like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 does this thing where you play the game for a little bit there's a bunch of tutorials and then all of the music is getting really fucking epic and you you're just seeing all this amazing stuff happen and then as soon as that camera comes behind the character and it's like go time to like start the battle everything pauses and there's like a million fucking mm-hmm. things of text on the screen that show you what you're supposed <laughs> to do and I'm like wow Wow. Yeah. I I literally I was in it. I was so in it and I am no longer in it. Like come on, man. And um obviously like Final Fantasy 13 has been beat to fucking hell and back for just it's mm. it's just tutorials, tutorials, tutorials until you're fucking 40 hours into the video game. Right. Um and I I <laughs> I like Final Fantasy thirteen. Definitely, you know? yeah. No, those th- those are definitely annoying. But I just agree. like, like going back to seven. Once you're once you're done mm. with that whole first mission and you get back to Midgar, there is an entire optional room that you can go into, where there's a character that's just like, "Hey, what do you want to know?" And it tells you how the whole game works. Like it tells you about like everything. I mean. Mm-hmm. whenever you like see chocobos for the first time there's another tutorial there um but it wouldn't make sense for the game to show you how chocobos work in the beginning because you haven't seen them yet you know um so on that level it makes sense but once you once you learn about something it tells you everything you need to know and then it puts in your menu like hey do you want to learn about the game go through these menus and and learn about the Mm. game at your own pace instead of the game being a story driven experience and it's stopping everything just to like give you a little piece of information and then 10 minutes later give you another little piece of information and sure maybe a lot of information all at once could be a little overbearing but i think i would just rather figure out how this shit works on my own you know yeah Definitely. And I feel like that is a huge issue that I have had with a lot of RPGs. It's just like mm-hmm. just taking you out of the experience for the sake of just 
oh, let me explain how all of this works. <laughs> oh, and it's like, man, just fucking give it to me yeah. at once. Yeah, I honestly do skip a lot of that shit. Yeah, yeah, it's like if I get confused later on, just give me like a directory that I can go to and figure it out on my own instead mm-hmm. of having to. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I think that's. <laughs> I agree with you with um, you know uh what was it random encounters and stuff but i think that's my other big one is just god tutorials so many tutorials yeah definitely other than that we love jrpgs (laughs) yeah uh now that we've shat on jrpgs and and talked about how much we we despise them and never want to play them again um, uh ah man i'm trying to Trying to think of what would be a good question for next week. I mean, I guess the easy one would be like, "What's your favorite thing about RPGs?" I, um, but I feel like we did something similar to that. Yeah, though. I feel like we did too. Um, I, I, I think the only two episodes that we did do though, that was uh, that I think we had like a definitive question of the week was episode four and five, and mm-hmm. that's just because. I mean, maybe I forgot to post them in the Discord, but I'm looking at the Discord server right now, and for episode four, it was uh, it was music-based. Like, what are your favorite soundtracks? Who's your favorite composer? Episode five was, mm-hmm. what's your favorite video game? Like, what was your very first video game? And now we've mm-hmm. talked about what our uh, least favorite things, the things we hate about JRPGs. Off the, off the top of your head, do you think you, you have another good one, or, mm. or what? Maybe this one could be uh, what's an RPG that you like that you wish more people knew about, like an underrated JRPG? Ooh, yeah. Favorite underrated RPG. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great one. Cool. Yeah, so, yeah. Question of the week. What is your favorite underrated RPG? And you can't say Final Fantasy IX because now that <laughs> game has become so underrated that it yeah. is now becoming overrated, okay? Right. So <laughs> I love Final <laughs> Fantasy IX. That's my favorite one. It's no longer underrated, all right? right? <laughs> uh, so next time, this is not Videoverse. I was going to say Videoverse again. It's okay. I've done um, it. almost done it multiple times. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're still playing through Chrono Trigger right now. Mm -hmm. Next episode might not be Chrono Trigger, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So the next time, we might just continue to talk about more news, and um, we'll have another question of the week. Maybe we'll we'll actually think about it this time. (laughs) Um, But, uh, yeah, so... Thank you guys again for listening to the ramen stand. Uh, <laughs> housekeeping, housekeeping, housekeeping. Um, we've got Discord. Thank you again to Twilight Artichoke for hey. uh, answering our question of the week in the Discord. Uh, we still have more channels. Uh, right now we have a total of like, okay, so let's see. There's me, you. Mm-hmm. We got Car- Carison Ford, mm-hmm. which is how you pronounce it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um she she was kind enough to correct me whenever I would whenever I shouted her out mm-hmm. talking about the Kingdom Minds Kingdom Minds podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I was saying like Car- Carrie Sonford <laughs> and shit like right. that. Um, it's like it, it's like a Harrison Ford. Yeah. Um, Car Harrison Ford, and then we got nonstop Final Fantasy. Um, we got uh one one pint ones. Oh. One pint, one pint, one pint. <laughs> is this a new person? I, I, th- I think so. Did we so. just gain another person in the Discord? I think that this guy's new, yeah. One, one pintones. Anyways, okay, yeah. And then we got Twilight Artichoke. So right now, I think that's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. We got six. Oh, we got six whole shit. fucking people in the nah, Discord. We partied. All right, well, <laughs> guys, join the Discord. Um, we got Come the on, Discord. Yeah, we got the Discord. We got the... Um, the the twits the tweety tweets we got twitter mm-hmm. uh you can find us at uh, overleveled cast on twitter uh you'll you yeah. see that on the screen if you're watching the youtube version um and that's always in the in the description box if you're on spotify or apple or wherever the hell you're listening to this yeah. um we also got a patreon uh yeah. we have the link to that in the uh in the what's it called the description box for everything yep, as well if you want to support us there yeah, um, DJ, my beautiful co-host, Hello. has uh, a YouTube channel called Mushroom Man. 
Uh, yes. DJ, you just uploaded a fucking awesome video. I <laughs> Last time, whenever I commented on one of your videos, I said, I think that's my favorite video that you've made. Mm-hmm. And I want to go ahead and say, DJ, I think your most recent video is my favorite video that you've made. Thanks. I'm glad <laughs> you liked it. I mean, that's the goal is to make each one better than the last one. Yeah. Yeah. One Piece, The King of the Pirate's Journey, Romance Dawn Arc. Um, mm-hmm. the first go, yeah, the first arc in one piece out of 31, three episodes yeah, out of so, 976. So far. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, go, go subscribe to DJ mushroom man again. Go watch his other videos as well. Uh, he's making great stuff. So I think that's it. Oh, also yep. you have an anime podcast. I, oh, yes, I feel I like do. we are neglectful into uh mentioning that one every week but yep. you do That's have fine. uh yeah you talk you you want to you want to tell them about sure. our uh rom, or the ramen stand podcast yes the ramen stand podcast is a podcast uh where we talk about anime just me and two of my friends kai and cole cole is also a member of videoverse uh and we just talk about our yeah uh, about a lot about anime because we the three of us we really love anime and so we've been talking about that we have about currently five episodes up uh we talked about anime such as jujitsu kaisen a really popular really fucking good one um and we talk about just yeah we just talk about anime it's great uh, go check that one out like i told you about this dj but for all of our listeners this is actually a podcast that i listen to whenever they whenever they upload because i i have a job that is very like just uh independent like Mm -hmm. i can just have my headphones in for like 10 hours of the day and just listen Mm -hmm. to music and podcasts like all day so that's pretty much just how i keep myself sane while i'm alone all day and i listened to their episode discussing jujitsu kaisen Mm -hmm. And it genuinely, like, inspired me to start watching the show just because of of me hearing their opinions of it. Mm-hmm. So, if you're a fan, if you're a fan of anime, or maybe you maybe you're not a fan of anime, and you want to hear <gasps> about uh, anime from three uh, non toxic people who are not <laughs> so fucking up in arms about anime, um, yeah, because there's a lot of those. Yeah, go ahead and give them a listen to. Yeah. So, um thank you again for for listening to the podcast. We have links to all of that shit in the description. Um yeah. Yeah. Should we should we sign off in a special way or no? <laughs> you know what? Sure. Why not? Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and just say hasta hasta lasagna, muchachos. <laughs> so, me say that? No, no, no. That's what I I just said it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you can say you can uh, say whatever you want. I'll I'll see you next time, Buttercups. Oh, okay. Oh, and how about this one? How about this one? Bye, bye, Girl Scout. <laughs> <laughs>